Welcome to the Emerging Screenwriters Interview Series, sponsored by ISA. Today we have... Steve Feld. Hi, Steve. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Good. Thank you so much for being here. My Part pleasure. of this new series that we're doing um, where we're talking to emerging screenwriters. In different, you know, emerging is such an arbitrary word of wherever you're at, you know, in your career. So we're going to start with a couple icebreaker questions just okay. to sort of get, get the nerves gone. Um, what, what are you watching right now? We're watching Bad Sisters. Okay, what's that on? Um, that's on Apple Plus. Okay. Yeah. I've it's never even Brit- heard of that. British. Okay. Yeah, um, kind of a dramedy, but uh-huh. uh, it's, it's, it's excellent. Oh, good. And also um, The Patient, mm-hmm. which is, that. yeah. Is that Steve Carell? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's very disturbing. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if I want to see that then. Yeah. I'm like, uh, there's that, that new movie out called Smile, and I'm like, right. nope. <laughs> it's just, nope. I'll wait till like, I can watch it in on my TV in the middle of the day. Yeah. No. The, and, they're, and they're doing this advertising campaign where they're, like, putting them at baseball games and stuff, where it's just somebody like this, like, in the background. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Who in the industry, whether it be a writer, director, producer, actor, who are your cinematic heroes? Aaron Sorkin, Mm -hmm. probably, as a writer. Um, He just has such talent and such a way with words. You know, I like the fact that uh, when when he writes something, that's what the actors have to say. Right. They they can't... um, They can't deviate from that. Yeah, improvise. (laughs) And as a writer, you, you can really appreciate that. That is true. So ever since The West Wing, I've mm. always, always um, loved everything he's written and uh, think he's just a one-in-a-generation talent. Yeah. He's, he's definitely, speak. you know, when you talk about voice, you know when you're hearing Aaron Sorkin. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, okay, so let's go back to the beginning for you. Okay. When did you first know either as a child or adult, that you were going to be a writer or creative? And did you start writing or were you doing something else creatively first? You know, as, as far back as I can remember, kindergarten, I just loved making up stories and telling stories. And as soon as I could write, writing stories. Mm. And uh, I didn't know I was going to be a writer. I just knew that that's what I really loved doing. And, um, you know, I didn't know you could someone could do that as a profession Mm. um i didn't really find out that that could be a profession until i saw it on the dick van dyke show Mm. and uh he was a writer uh he uh went to work told jokes all the time at work came home to a beautiful wife um and it was like that's the kind of profession i want (laughs) you're like sold yeah um so tell me about your career path and from kindergarten when you started writing um up until where you are now um i know you have a you have emmys right so sort of tell me about where you started and how that got you to where you are now i started out in a local market in chicago um writing and producing promos for the local nbc station there and um that was uh, enough for me to get my foot in the door Mm -hmm. And after um, about a year of that, we decided to move to Los Angeles and to see if I could parlay that into, you know, the next stage of my career. I got uh, a similar job with the CBS affiliate out here, and that was kind of my launching pad. Mm -hmm. I was able to go from that and do all sorts of um, different genres. Mm -hmm. I did some sitcom writing I did some drama writing I did kids television I did um I don't want to say reality because it wasn't reality back then but documentary (laughs) stuff like that Uh and um I was able to uh have a successful career doing that and then what are you doing now so when did you stop working um in in that respect and started really focusing on your own projects um, I've always wanted to focus on my own projects, mm-hmm. and I, I would spend a lot of time writing spec scripts uh, for different shows that were on Cheers, um, Night Court, uh, way back Barney Miller, mm-hmm. those shows, and um, I, I did it you know, in order to get noticed, but also 
to exercise my writing chops right. and see if I, I could write. And those were the scripts that helped me get my sitcom writing experience going and get the uh, the assignment for sitcom. So, right. um, and then um, soon after that, um, I just decided to take a stab at writing features. And the first couple I wrote were awful, <laughs> just terrible. You know, I just, you know, I didn't have any structure. I didn't, right. I, I had a story, but I look back at them now and, you know, it's, it's very difficult for me even to get through it. Right. It's a cringy. Right. right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but once I got the first couple out of the way, um, then I started to write what I think and um, some other, you know, influential people thought was good work. And um, so, and that just started me down a path where I just had idea after idea after idea and I would start writing one thing and I'd have another idea and I'd start writing that and I, I would just just continuously just write mm -hmm. and write and that's been the way it's it's been that way ever since I can remember. Whether it's features, I do a lot of writing of shorts now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just very, very uh, satisfying to know that I always have these ideas that I always want to put onto paper and mm -hmm. put out there. Do you and your son collaborate together we, and then to make projects and then they're out in the festival circuit? Right, right? yeah, yeah. We collaborated on one uh, called 40 Minutes Over mm -hmm. Maui. Right. And um, I was the executive producer and writer and my son was the executive producer and director. And um, that, that was a, a comedy based on the false missile attack a warning that they had in Hawaii right. where two, um, a, a couple goes to their fantasy vacation and they wake up in the morning to hear this missile warning and they think they're going to die. And it goes right. through all the machinations of, you know, almost like the five stages of grief. Right. And um, it was a, a pretty funny uh, take on what could have been a tragic event. Right. Um, and yeah, it went and went through the festival circuit, won several awards, yeah, and did really well. Good. Um, speaking of that, you know, writing something in where it's comedic, but it's a subject matter that could be very dramatic. Um, how would you describe your voice as a writer? Like, what do you write? What always resonates in each thing that you're writing in terms of character? I always like my characters to have a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've written, you know, 90% of what I write is comedy. So that's, that's easy. Um, but um, I, I just always want the humor to, to come out of any situation. Mm -hmm. You know, even when I write a dramedy, um, there's lots of humor in there. And it's more the comedy than the drama. But um, I just, I think humor is... What, what I do best and where I feel most natural. Why is that? Why do you why do you have this drive to even turn um, sad stories or sad circumstances? Why why do you feel like you're the person to tell these stories with comedy? Well, I think that you know when you go to the to the movies, you want to feel good when you come out of it, mm -hmm. at least I do, um, you know, I, and, and I think that, you know, when you, you provide some humor, you know, let people laugh, you know, let people enjoy themselves. At least I, I, I put myself in their position and I want to go and enjoy myself and have a good time and, you know, learn something. Um, and even if it is not a happy ending to something, at least, you know, you haven't sat in, you know, two hours in the dark, you know, being pressed down, you know, right. depressed. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you want to leave changed in a positive way right. versus just leaving and like worse right. off than you came yeah. in. And well, I pay money for that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not saying there isn't a market for that. It's sure. just what I enjoy. Right. And and what I like to see. Yeah. Um. So when it comes to where you are in your career right now, what what are you doing right now? And then what are your future goals? What I'm doing right now is uh, doing a lot of rewriting of my scripts. 
um, tightening them up. They can always be improved. So I like to go back and look look at what I've done a couple of years ago and see if it can, uh, you know, I can make it better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also exploring new ideas. And my future goals is um, to have, you know, one or as many as I can made into features. Mm-hmm. Uh, short term, I'd like to make another short with my son. That would be fun to do yeah. since we had such good success with that. Um, or just make another short, period. Right. Tell me about your involvement with ISA and what ISA has done for you um, and what you hope to happen in the future. Um, ISA, like a number of other organizations out there, sponsor contests, which I always um, would I, I encourage other writers to enter. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't win, you can always get feedback. And it's always a very beneficial thing to get feedback because most writers aren't represented, don't have managers, and even those that, that do don't always get feedback from their writing. So I like to enter contests, get feedback, and occasionally, you know, I've won a, a few contests, which mm-hmm. is very satisfying. Um, the ISA contest that I won was Shoot Your Sizzle. Mm-hmm. And that was for a, a feature film that I wrote called Take My Wife, Please, a good example of a dramedy mm-hmm. in which a, a man fearing he's dying of cancer um, tries to find a second husband for his wife. Um, that was a very, very uh, enjoyable process the, when we you know, ended up doing the sizzle reel because mm-hmm. I got to see my work you know, come alive in the shorter form but at least got to see you know actors perform the script and it was uh, a very satisfying uh, you know endeavor mm-hmm. to take part in and you actually directed yes your sizzle right You're right yes I mean I'm, a- I'm asking you even though I was there yeah <laughs> part of that um, what are you hoping for maybe this sizzle you know what are you hoping that that can help you with. Are you trying to get Take My Wife, Please made into a feature? Is yes. that the original? Yeah, that that, that was, um, you know, sizzle reels are always really important because, you know, everybody has a script and to get it read is nearly impossible. Right. You know, a sizzle is, you know, five minute snippet of what it is and hopefully it's the best parts of the, uh, of the script and that will garner the interest, you know, from either a, a producer or a production company or a management company mm-hmm. to want to read the script then. Right. So that's To what visualize I'm... it to see the potential of right. the feature project. Right. Which is what you're hoping for. What tips or tricks or tools throughout your career do you do you most like to share in for you know more new coming screenwriters or emerging screenwriters in that sense? It's very important to network. You know, meet other screenwriters, meet other people in the profession, not only screenwriters, actors. Um, you know, if you have enough actors that are, and they're always looking to do work, you could always do, you know, come up with a table read on your own. You don't have to mm-hmm. win a contest to to do that. You can yeah. do a table read. Networking is very important. Um, and entering contests, like I said before, that's very very important because that's a great way to get noticed Mm -hmm. if you win or you place uh, and a great way to get your work read and also you know to get feedback how many scripts whether it be tv pilots or specs or whatever how many have you written and then how many are you how many do you share with the world as opposed to the ones that you're like yeah, those were my first ones. I'm not showing those. Um, see, I've probably written uh, about 20 features um, and about the same amount of shorts. Mm-hmm. And then as far as TV pilots, I wrote the first season of a TV comedy pilot, um, first eight episodes. And then I wrote um, two other pilots. So I have a lot, a lot of... Um, work to to mm-hmm. present to people, and then I think out of that, most of the time 
it's usually depending on when when I get script requests from uh, different organizations with mm -hmm. you know their clients are looking for right it's do I have anything that fits it and it's usually the same 20 percent right that you know fit the bill sure what's like whatever's current and happening now right. um what in in your own career and and sort of you know self employedness what drives you what keeps you pushing what keeps you writing oh the dream of seeing your your script turn into a movie right yeah hearing your words come yeah. out yeah yeah that just continues yes keeps pushing you even though you've yeah. had that happen yes yes okay your IMDb says you wrote a Charles in Charge episode. Yes. Oh, yes Could you just did. talk a little bit about how that came to be? I happened to meet um, the executive producer of Charles in Charge, a gentleman by the name of Al Burton. Mm -hmm. And um, I volunteered. He, he was spearheading a project um, with Nickelodeon to paint over graffiti in, in the streets of Hollywood. And I volunteered to um, produce a, a short based on what he was doing. And I didn't ask him for money. I didn't ask him for anything. I just volunteered my time and mm -hmm. my talents. And I was rewarded with a chance to pitch story ideas to to him for Charles in Charge. Um, and um, one of the ones that I pitched, he liked a lot. And so I got the story assignment for that. Mm. And um, so again, you know, thinking ahead of, you know, where I was, you know, I, I knew that this was a potential avenue to getting to write sitcoms, which is what I wanted to do. Right. And, um, you know, to help him out without any compensation or mm -hmm. ask for anything back, you know, I thought this is what I'll, I'll try and do. And it worked out really well. Um, I wrote the script. And um, got to see it taped live, um, and it was a thrill. You know, my whole family, my extended family, came in from, you know, around the country to to see it, and uh, it was a thrill. That's awesome. What was the episode called? I know what my second episode was called, but how many did you write? I, I wrote two. The second one was never produced because they mm. they uh, ended the series before it was oh. produced. Um, does it have it on there? It sounds very serious for Charles in Charge. <laughs> Fatal Obsession. Oh, yeah. Fatal, oh. yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the title of the, the episode I wrote was Fatal Obsession. Uh, and the, the story was there was a, uh, a co-ed that was in love with Charles. And we kind of did a parody of Fatal Attraction mm -hmm. um, and did a lot of jokes, a lot of riffs on, you know, <laughs> Don't hope she doesn't boil your bunny. Right. Stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it was just a parody on uh, Fatal Attraction. That's fun. So, speaking of, so you got this writing assignment on Charles in Charge, but did they not have, like, how, how did it work then? Did they have writers who just wrote and pitched episodes, or did they have a writer's room, or how, what was the, how did it work? How it worked for me is um, I pitched the story, and once it was sold, then I would go in and meet with them. I'd come up with the outline, mm -hmm. and I'd go away and write the first draft. Then I'd come in and give it to them. They'd give me notes, and I'd write the second draft and as many drafts as I needed to write to get into shape. And then um, they had uh, two staff writers, mm -hmm. and then they would come in and do a little touch-up. Sure. Uh, not much, but you know, a little bit because they knew the characters sure. so yeah. well. So. Yeah, a, a lot of it was uh, freelance writers coming in and pitching. And that also was how I got um, my Lassie writing assignments. Mm -hmm. uh, the same same executive producer. and oh. He brought back Lassie, and right. he brought me on to produce it and then to write the pilot episode. So, wow. um, yeah, it just goes to show you that, yeah. you know, you put yourself out there you know, you might not think you're going to get anything back from it. And I've had situations where I've volunteered many, many times and nothing's come of it. Sure. But the few times, there's been a few times 
where it yeah, has. You, you have to put yourself out there not expecting right. something back. But there's always that hope that, like, okay, maybe this can create something nice. But also, right. you're just doing it for the sake of right. doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, don't expect, you know, when you f- first start out that they're going to be banging down your door with yeah. script assignments. You know, you got to go out there and, you know, make hay. You know, you yeah. have to, you know, generate the work yourself. Yeah. You know, in any number of ways. Yep. All right, I'm going to switch to some fun questions at the end. This is like our in the actor's studio moment, right? All right. (laughs) What's your favorite word? Unencumbered. Why? (laughs) Just, you know, I I don't like to be encumbered. (laughs) So have nothing in your way. Right. And you can have, um, you know, freedom Mm -hmm. to do whatever you need to do. That is a good word. Yeah. It's not one we use enough, I think. Yeah. And it's funny. So that makes sense for you. Um, what grammatical, spelling, writing error do you, is your like biggest pet peeve? Spelling. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a nut when it comes to making sure things are spelled correctly. Mm-hmm. And um, my kids will tell you that, you know, from, you know, me redlining their homework. Um but I think spelling, if, if you don't spell things correctly, it shows that you're not serious about your craft. Mm. And, you know, you, you, not everybody, I'm not a good speller, mm. but I know enough, now that you have the tools, the spell check, I know enough to go back and, and make sure everything is spelled correctly. And then the last one is, if you were given three wishes, what would you wish for? Three wishes. Professionally or... Anything. Anything. Wish my family a long life and health. Mm -hmm. Um, Success to my three children. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe success for my wife and I in our endeavors. That's good. And I like that you're using success because that's that's a personal word, you know. Success to you could be different for somebody else. So for you, what does success mean? Well, right now it means um, getting one of my scripts made into a feature. Right. I've had a, a very long career in television and I've had a lot of success. And that's kind of a chapter that's over with. Right. So, you know, I've had that success. And I'm very proud of it. Um, I just, you know, in, in this new chapter, that would be my definition of success. From those years of working in television production, um, what, looking back onto that, what are some things that that you learned while doing that um, that that are the most valuable to you in terms of like what you're doing now? Collaboration is really, really important. That nobody can be successful just by themselves. They have to have collaborators. Mm -hmm. And if you know how to work with your collaborators, um, the better. You know, that's that's really important. Um, Also, you know, failure is part of this this Mm -hmm. business. And, you know, everybody who's in this business knows... Failure is, you know, just that, that that goes with the territory. Right. And you fail more, at least most people fail more than they succeed. And if you can learn from your failures and, you know, put that to use, you know, you will end up succeeding eventually. I love that. I think that's a great way to end. So okay. thank you so much for sure. being here with us on the Emerging Screenwriters Interview Series. And we will see you next time.